Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I know I've been filming a lot, like these past two weeks, only because I've been trying to get out content more and more and more because I know for like the past like year I've been fucking slacking. Um, and lately I've really been striving to find time to make more content. So yeah, that's why I'm back after like, I think I posted my last video like three days ago, but you know I'm gonna react to these Pretty Little Liars videos because apparently there's only been 10 episodes and the last one came out probably like two weeks ago, so I'm late. But I'm literally reacting like right now because I work a lot and yeah, but best leave season two come around because I heard we got, we got, okay, we got a season two coming. Apparently Lucy Hale, the girl who played Arya on the original Pretty Little Liars is gonna be on season two. So like, I'm gonna be out here fucked up watching this shit, okay? Like tonight's episode, I literally just got back from, um, I went to my job, had dinner, whatever, and then went to a bar with my coworkers and I'm a little fucked up, I'm a little fucked up y'all. But like, I had to come on here and react to episode four cause I legit watched episode four and was like, hey yo, we, we had a lot of things happening. Let's get into it because I'm like really excited, okay? Okay, so as usual, got the fucking notes, yo. Got the notes, got the what's good, got the yeah, okay. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about because it's the first thing that happened is tell me why Noah's mom and Noah is probably like one of my favorite characters. Like I fuck with her, okay? So remember the last episode she was talking to her boyfriend about how like how she got into her little situation. Keep in mind, I did not expect it to be like, oh yeah, my mom got caught doing drugs and I took the fall for it and she let me. Like what kind of bullshit, whatever. So that's what happened, right? Tell me why. It flashes black, do a little bloop bloop, do a little flashback, whatever. Noah's mom, I think her name's Marjorie or something. It's something with M, it's something. Figure it out, let me know. But I think it's Marjorie. So Marjorie is like talking to teenage Angela Waters and they spoken or whatever. I don't know where they are. Like I legit don't know where the fuck they are. They're in the like parking lot of some place. I don't know. And she like, oh my God, like it's cool to smell. Like don't worry, you're not gonna get caught. Like if you get caught, like don't worry about it. Da -da -da. And then they get caught, of course. Tell me why Marjorie has Angela take the fall. Are you out of your fucking mind? Bitch, you was smoking. You're convincing fucking Angela to smoke. Angela is like, oh, like that. So that pissed me off. And not for nothing, it was like a foreshadowing type of shit going on because like you're smoking and you're having Angela take the fall so she can feel like she's part of the fucking cool kids crowd. And then she get called and you're like, eh. It's okay. It's okay, Angela. Like, don't worry about it. Bitch, don't worry about it. Are you out of your fucking mind? Now you're an adult. Having your fucking teenage daughter take the fall for you. Are you out of your mind? I don't know, like, if the writers... I don't, I don't know. I really don't know, bitch. That foreshadowing really fucking scared me. I was like, wow. So you, you did this shit with Angela. Now this girl is dead. This is the reason fucking why you, your daughter is being tormented. And now you're going to fucking do the same shit to your daughter. Like, are we... Hey, hey. I don't really know what that means. But I thought it was dumb as fuck. And like, I snapped the fuck out. Like, I really wasn't expecting that type of storyline. It was interesting. I will give it that. It was very entertaining. But like, fuck you. As soon as I found out that Noah took the fall for her mother and then the next episode, they're like, oh yeah, like this is where her mother got it from. Like she started with Angela. Like, bro, are you out of your mind? That's your child. Do you not? Whatever. So like that happened. That They did a little flashback, whatever. And then it shows that A sent Marjorie a little care package or whatever because bro, a, I'm telling you, A really must be connected to Angela because that little care package they sent to Miss Marjorie is like the same care package that Marjorie gave to Angela. It was like a bear, like a little stuffed animal or whatever, like a teddy bear. 
I forgot what it says. I really can't remember, but it said something, okay? And then when she opened up the package, it was the same teddy bear, same message. And I was like, hey, what are we really doing today? And then on top of that, then I started to think, right? I was like, A, are you going to start sending fuck ass care packages to all the mothers? Because that's the vibe I'm getting. You started with images, mom. Now you out here sending care packages to people's mothers. And like I said, I, the last video, I really don't understand why. Like, if you have beef with mothers, go talk to the mothers. Why are you bothering people's children? And people's children's children, children. AKA Imogen, cause sis is the only one that's pregnant. But also everybody is stressed the fuck out of their minds. But in Imogen's the main one. Why? Cause she got a kid. Clearly you don't give a fuck about that though. Because you just out here stressing people out. And for what? They have nothing to do with their mom's fuck assness. They weren't even born. Weren't even thought of in this bitch. But you're going after children. And you're probably like 60 going after kids. That's dumb as fuck and I don't approve. At least the A and the original was at least like close to their age. The first A was their age. The first A was like 16, 17. The second A was at least like 26 and they're like 16. That's somewhat close. My boy, you're like 60 years old and you're going after 16 and 17 year olds what are you doing with your life whatever i'm pissed okay so i got three things to notes let's get through this shit because i'm pissed okay so we already talked about that that's cute da -da -da -da. oh yeah let's get into this fuck ass like ballet teacher first of all i think i talked about this i think the first episode i really don't like how this fuck ass ballet teacher talks to theron she's mad at racist and just gives me like trump vibes it's a no for me like who the fuck you think you talking to theron is a badass bitch and know what the fuck she doing yes yeah, she should have the swan lake she should have she should be a lead in the swan lake why are you talking to her that type of way? That's exactly how I felt the first episode and I literally want to throw the fuck up blood. Anyway, I think I said I don't like, yeah, I don't like this ballet teacher. She always gives me racist Karen vibes. Swore the fucking writer's name Karen for a fuck ass reason. Why you give her the name Karen? Kelly and Karen. If you wanted K names, it could have been anything else. Kristen, Kirsten, Kylie. Kendall, Kim, Chloe, Courtney, like I, anyway, then I said, I like how this, the guy is really trying to hang out with Mouse, so that was because the next scene after the fucking teacher was doing the fuck shit, this guy was the one that like, she's like a gamer with, he was really trying to like, hang out with her. Like, he asked her, like, to hang out a bunch of times, and then, like, Mouse is pretty much talking about her mom, or moms, and pretty much is talking about how, you know, it's been kind of crazy at home, and things are kind of eh, and, um, he was being really sweet about it, and I appreciated that. I thought it was really cute, and I hope her and this guy get together, because we don't have a lot of couples on the show, and I want to see more love, more positivity, less... Let's get into the love. Let's get into like I like him and you know feelings and I want to explore that type of storyline. So I hope that happens. Okay, next page. Oh, so this one was really interesting. So the next scene, um, we have of course Imogen in her fuck ass house where her mom was murdered. First of all, why are you in a house where your mom was murdered? I understand, but at the same time, like I would not be in that bitch by myself. Like, packing shit up to go, there's absolutely no way I'd be in that fuck-ass house by myself. And knowing that, like, A was in there already and A could get in there, like, just randomly, I just, I, yeah. So she was in there and she was, like, I think she was in the basement at first. And then, of course, A, like, appeared out of nowhere. And I was like, yeah, like, that's to be expected. And then I think at one point she was, like, in her mom's room looking through her mom's diaries and like she heard people giggling so i was like okay obviously that's p 
people like i don't think that's like an a tactic but like you never fucking know with this fuck ass show so then she go outside and these buyers are like yeah like we just took a selfie because like we're buying this house and like ah. and then bro <laughs> Imogen ran them buyers off. I guess she pretty much told them like, oh, my mom died in this house. Probably was like, it's haunted by goats. And then them fuck ass buyers just kissed her and they ran the fuck off. And Tabby's mom was like, bro, like I'm trying to sell the house. And you literally just like drove them bitches away. Like, and Imogen's like, bro, like it's my mom's house. Like I, I don't want strangers coming in. Like the fuck. And also too, I, wait, give me a second. Let me give me yeah, I don't have a cup right now, so we're just gonna drink this bitch off this off this bottle. Hold up. Oh, that's good as fuck. Okay. Hold up. Let me keep that there. I'm like, yeah. So I do understand that Imogen is not ready to let her mom's house go. Um, I completely understand it. But also too, I'm like, your mom's house is eventually gonna have to sell. And your mom's best friend is trying to do her best to like sell it. And you're, what are you doing? You're running off buyers. But like also too, Imogen is in a state where she's like, she's trying to figure out what happened to her mom. Cause at this point she don't really feel like her mom was, her mom killed herself, which her mom did. Her mom was murdered. But of course she's going to have questions like, why did my mom get murdered? Does it have something to do with Angela Waters? Does it have something to do with A? And also Tabby's mom is really not try, trying to tell her no fuck ass answers. And I'm like, bro, like, you know something. This is your best friend's kid. And you're really not going to say nothing? Like, <laughs> so at this point, I'm on Imogen's side. I'm like, okay, you ran off the buyers, but as you fucking should. You don't have any answers. So like, how are you supposed to let your mom house sell and your, pro your childhood house sell and you don't have any answers as to why your mom is not here. Like, come on. You know what I mean? Like, Tabby's mom, like, you should understand that because you're keeping all the fuck ass secrets. I'm not saying Tabby's mom is guilty of actually killing Imogen's mother, but you're not giving Imogen's, like, Imogen the fuck answers that she want. But whatever. So that's pretty much what I said, the first paragraph. And then I was like, Tabby's mom is bugging me. Like, tell me what happened. I like how Angela is, uh, no, I like how Imogen is pushing the Angela's water things make the moms talk. I think I meant like, like she's pushing the storyline. Like, what the fuck did y'all do to Angela Waters that's making y'all so fucking silent? Like, I need to know, does it have something to do with my mom? I like that. I really do like Im Imogen's character. Um, she's pretty much just like a sad pregnant girl who really just wants to find out the answers to what happened to her mom. And I respect it. Like, it doesn't bother me. It's completely understandable. Everything that's going on right now, I get. Like, regarding her. So that's all I said. What are, geez, you're gonna ask them to be okay let's get into the other scene because this scene i was like dithic so tabby is um shooting this scene i guess for class and um she's asking greg to being in it greg is the guy that was with karen so she's pretty much like hey like you know i want you to be in this scene but like i understand like if you're still grieving because this was karen's boyfriend and he's like, okay, like, I'll be in it, whatever, da da da. She pretty much explains the whole plot, like, what she wants him to do. Her whole thing is pretty much like a psycho thing. If y'all haven't seen Psycho, I've never seen it, but I know the synopsis. And I think it's like a famous actress's mom that was in there. I think it could be Jamie Lee Curtis, but I could be fucking wrong because I don't watch scary movies, but I feel like I've heard of that before. Apparently, she in a shower and like a guy stab her. And like, that's all I know about the shits um let me know the plot like down below because like i don't know anything about it because clearly i don't watch horror movies so like fuck them bitches so that's pretty much what she wants him to do like he's the cute guy that like stabs the girl or like he gets stabs in the shower something like that so she pretty much wants him to be in it he like okay cool like bet so she tells him like yeah like we'll make it work maybe like sometimes after school like when the school is closed at night like we'll film this shit so that's pretty much what she's telling him. and at this time I'm like, what? Like, I get at, like, they were at lunch talking about guys are pretty much talking about the film that she has to do and how she has to have, like, a guy that, 
what specifically did she say? I forgot what she says, but it was something on the lines of like, just someone who isn't afraid to like do something or like make something happen or like, you know, a cute guy that's like willing to do something or willing to get something done. And of course, Greg was like, okay, like hot girl in the shower and like I get stabbed. Cool. Sounds good. And it was just very easy to like get him on board. So I was like, interesting. Okay. And we really haven't heard that much from Greg. Like, I think the last time I saw Greg was like episode two and I'm on episode four. So I'm just kind of wondering when we're going to get more of him. Are we going to get an extra storyline? Are we going to get a storyline regarding him going through like, like, is he going to feel bad and sad about Karen dying? Are we going to find out like how he, you know, started to date Karen? Are we going to find out the storyline of what happened with him and fucking Imogen? Because that's still up in the air and no one actually knows so like yeah okay so that's what happened with him this stuff was uh, oh yeah okay so the next scene is the sheriff is talking to angela and like i told y'all the last time whatever they're on some weird ass shit where he's like bargaining with her to like make shit work like okay like the last time it was like aka like if you do this for me like you'll get off like it'll be you theron and fucking mouse like y'all will get off and the only people that can fucking get charged is you know tabby and fucking imogen like that's pretty much on a way that he's like on and like the whole bargain shit and like yada 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 so he's talking to noah about um i think this part he was talking about her mom i'm a little late y'all i'm very sorry but i think this particular part as my um, my memory is going back he was talking about Noah's mom and pretty much that situation um and like obviously like the mom getting caught and it's actually Noah and yada 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 and like I said the last time like he just gives me weird ass vibes I don't know why I really don't because there's not a lot of characters on that show that give me weird ass vibes obviously A is one of them because he's just yeah and then you got the sheriff that's just yeah so I, I don't know why he really makes me want to throw the fuck up blood but i hope it comes up sooner or later because i know it just can't be me i know i'm not the only one that feels that way and if i do what the fuck so i literally just said this whole sheriff and noah thing really pisses me off because i mean if i'm being honest it does like we're gonna move to the next scene because i'm getting stressed out because he stresses me to fuck up speaking of the sheriff so obviously he is the father of kelly and karen now i've had this fucking theory since like the last episode only because it gives me very much nostalgic of the original purdue liars as you all know if you watch the purdue the original purdue liars we have interesting storyline when it comes to twins and not even just twins like it could be a situation where you think a girl's a lot of dead and she's actually alive we've had plenty of storylines where a girl is actually fucking alive but we thought she was dead for like a year or less than a year okay keep up with me so in this particular scene henry the little cute little guy that's um in ballet class with Farron, he's making a conversation and he makes a comment that really stood out to me regarding karen he pretty much says like oh dancing with kelly makes me feel like i'm dancing with karen Keep in mind, apparently Kelly is not as good as Karen was in ballet. So I'm like, I don't know why, but I instantly, my brain went, the fuck does that mean? I was like, is Karen alive? Because let's not pretend that this will be the first time in Pretty Little Liars universe history that a bitch died and now she alive. Let's not pretend that's not a thing plenty of times it's happened we're not gonna name names because you know maybe some people haven't watched it yet so spoiler alert spoiler alert we're not gonna name names for you sis but let's just say there's been plenty of storylines on the original pretty, pretty little liars that people have died and been the fuck alive the entire time for multiple reasons ran the fuck away trying to get this trying to do this trying to get this done whatever the case is teenage girls have been in hiding or working with or trying to work with this person that got double crossed now they dead or whatever and then they gotta pretend to be so and so but they really alive bro it's happened let's not pretend it hasn't 
So at this rate, I'm like, okay, so is that what's, is that, is that occurring? Because at this point, I think that's what's occurring. We're getting that comment. And I know it was just one comment. I know it was just a comment, but like, goddamn, like I instantly, my brain got triggered. I was like, is he really trying to say, am I picking up, like, am I picking up clues? Like, I don't, yeah, that's how I feel. So that's what Henry said, right? Okay, so we're done this. So we're gonna go on to the next page okay so let's see oh i think i literally just i literally wrote this down why is this nostalgic to the original because you never know who's dead or alive you never know in this bitch and this universe you never truly know who's alive or dead i i just saying okay so let's see oh shit yeah okay So the next scene, right? Now, I truly felt bad because, well, I've been feeling this since, like, the first episode. I think I actually, like, said it in the first YouTube video I actually did. And this particular moment, I really felt bad because Imogen is completely alone. We don't hear anything from her dad. We don't even know she has a dad. Her dad might have died. Or maybe he's alive, but is in jail or still drugs or never was in her life we don't know anything about Shawty's dad like no nothing has been said so that could come up maybe another time but at this point we don't know shit about her dad so I just feel so bad because she's alone and like now she's discovering like you know her mom's diaries and what if she discovers something that's entirely fucking fucked up in that in those diaries like I literally would throw out blood if I thought my mom was one person during my entire life and then I discover she's like a horrible person as I'm reading her diaries or hearing about shit her experiences like with other people because I feel like that's what's gonna happen because not for nothing fucking Tabby's mom trying to be like oh yeah like your mom when it came to Angela was the kindest person bitch are you out of your fucking mind let's not fucking pretend that at that fuck ass dance she told you not to fucking talk or help Angela and Angela fucking crying and dying what you mean what you mean what you mean what you mean she the fucking kindest one I don't know what that means I don't know why she said that it just made me feel a type of way like were you not there when she said that shit i don't know i i don't really know but all the fucking flashbacks that we've got of fucking images mom proves that her mom was a fucking mean girl in high school i'm just saying i don't mean that she was a mean girl as an adult but like don't try to sit here and you know pretend like she was a saint because shawty wasn't just saying that was kind of weird i still feel some type of way about that i just I don't really know what that means. It's a lot of shit that goes on the show. I don't know what the fuck it means. And I'll be like, whatever. But yeah, that's what, wait, what the fuck did I say? I feel so bad for Imogen. She's alone. No mom. Who's no, who knows what happened to her dad? I feel so bad. That's literally what the fuck I said in this little John John up here. So then I was like, Shawty is an orphan. Like literally, bro. Like, yeah, like she lives with her mom's best friend. And like her daughter but like shorty's a whole orphan like that's sad as fuck and she's going through a lot okay she's stressed she's pregnant like that's so sad to go through alone like you're you and your mom was planning to raise this baby like by yourselves your mom was probably so excited to have a fucking grandchild and then you're alone like that's so fucking stressful i literally need to drink okay i'm starting to feel better all right, let's move on to the next scene because I'm starting to get fucking sad. Wait, what? Oh. Oh, yeah. So this is when this shit got really fucking weird. So remember I told you the sheriff just gives me weird ass vibes and gives me fucking anxiety and that whole bargaining shit with Noah just because she knows that he doing fuck shit or whatever. Like that whole thing like is mad weird to me. So this motherfucker drops by Noah's house to search her house randomly Keep in mind, the entire time she's been doing her shit, this man never showed up to her house. Now, all of a sudden, you show up to her house to search her house for what? I don't know. He definitely got so out of his sleeve, but we don't know yet. We don't know. And I honestly just think he needs to go on a vacation or something. You know, just go away for like, I don't know, six episodes. That way I don't have to stare at his fuck ass face on the screen. Because he really, truly just gives me anxiety. Shout out to the actor. I don't know your name, but you're doing a great job. Because 
you give me anxiety and not the good kind okay all right like you make me extremely anxious and i literally want to throw the fuck up blood honestly if it wasn't so fucking obvious i would think you're a but then again one are you connected to angela i don't fucking know two that'd be too fucking obvious because obviously you want to fucking you know comfort all the kids hearts because your daughter died and now you're like i'm gonna blame it on the liars so obviously it's not you but shout out to you because you literally make my heart fucking brace and not in the best way at all <sighs> okay all right like i think pretty much the notes after that was just pretty much me saying you know like why is Imogen so comfortable with packing up her house by herself? Which is what I said earlier. But Shawty's doing a lot of packing because there's a lot of shit obviously in her house that her mom obviously left. And like Imogen probably still has stuff there, like tons of stuff. And it just makes me really uncomfortable considering she's there by herself and A can go in there at any time. And A doesn't really seem to give a fuck about attacking pregnant women. So yeah, I don't. I don't even know what he has going on, but we're going to get to him soon because it was a whole nother thing with that motherfucker. I, I don't got the time. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, at this point, Farron thinks that... Well, she has, a, she has a theory. She has a theory. She thinks that Kelly is Karen because she's like, well, they switch places all the time. And she actually mentions this to Henry later in the episode, like... Do you really think, like, I really think that could be Karen. Like, they switch places all the time. Like, why would this be any different? Only because I think she was first going off of um, Little Henry's comment. And then Kelly started to do weird shit. Like, started to use Karen's locker. And then, so from that on, uh, Farron told Henry, Yo, like, I want you to, like, massage Kelly's feet. And, like, if you see a scar from the little razor blade jaws that A put in the fucking shoes, let me the fuck know because I really think it's Karen. Like, that's pretty much what she's doing now. And, honestly, I ain't mad at Shawty, so I'm with it. Like, I don't know if it'll be, if it'll, if it is Karen. If it'll be crazy obvious and it'll just come out that it's Karen. But if it does, why the fuck did y'all switch places? And, like, Kelly, did she really fucking die, bro? Because if that's the fucking case, if you have watched the original Purdue Liars, you know, I told y'all before, all types of twin theories have been going on in that show. And then we finally get like two sets of twins, but it's not the same exact sets of twins that we got in the fucking books. And the books, the original A and the original Allison was a twin. It was Allison and Courtney. Then one, then it was like a situation where one of them took over the other one's life. The other one was like crazy and in a mental, you know, institution. The other one was like the actually like okay, sort of nice one. The one of them took over the other one's, like each other's life. And the next, so boom, boom, she died. Like that's pretty much how that was. And then she took over this one's life and she killed a twin. They switched places and she killed a twin. So I'm like, are we gonna get that? Because if we're gonna get that same fucking twin storyline i'm okay with it but like let me know because it's starting to feel like it okay so oh yeah so then the next scene fucking a sent noah this this text it's classic a text pretty much saying like yeah you know your mom got caught and like you know she did the same shit that she did to you to angela waters and she gonna pay for it and da 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 and literally i wrote classic a because that is a classic a text like i was like okay relax you're 60 tormenting 60 year old children dumb shit that's a dumb motherfucker right there so yeah so then the next scene obviously we get to the scene of remember i told y'all that tabby asked greg to shoot that movie or whatever so now he being a fuck ass creep and like he got his little thing out or whatever and i'm like first of all in movies when y'all shoot sex scenes y'all obviously are covered up here um obviously in movies it doesn't seem like that movies it's made to look like it's sexy but clearly there's like 40 people watching y'all like lighting crew producers like constantly you're doing different takes of we gotta light your leg we gotta light your thigh we gotta light her face like it's not sexy in the least bit but it's supposed to look sexy so when you watch a movie you think it's sexy but in real life it's fucking not so this man literally had his thing thing out and tabby was like completely over it which i completely understand like you don't respect her or any of the crew members or out at all you're like you're not making people feel safe like the fuck are you doing and that moment i wanted a to be like 
looking at Greg like, this is what you got the fuck going on, Greg? Like, I was just irritated. Like, Greg, why are you being nasty? But yeah, Greg was being nasty, but eventually it gets shot because I forgot his name, but he's like Tabby's little assistant. I even, I don't know, it's not her boss. I think it's her coworker, but like he shot the scene or whatever after Tabby went to go take a break, as she fucking should. And then he, and she came back and like the scene was shot and Tab, no, what's his name? Greg and fucking uh, Farron went the fuck home. I was like, yeah, cool. Cause like, I wouldn't be bothered with that mess. So that's what happened. But when it did happen, I, I just didn't feel good about it. I don't know why. I had a really weird feeling. I was like, you shot the scene, but like, it made me feel weird. He was like, yeah, I shot it. Like they, they went home, they got cold and you were outside and they went home. And I was, I, I don't know, I had a weird feeling like something's not right. I could be wrong. I could just be fucking weird. Maybe he's just really nice. But something was very much off about that. Like, I don't know just the vibe. He was like, yeah, I shot already. I was like, hey, hey, like, whatever. I literally said, why don't I feel good about this? I don't know, but we'll get back to that. Somebody help me, please. Or hopefully it comes out in the next few episodes. And then, wait, oh, yeah. So this was the scene where I was like, yo. So in the next scene, you know, Noah is um, home and uh, Noah, poor Noah, honestly, sis is going through it, especially these last few episodes. But anyway, so Noah is home and A is in Shawty's apartment building and she run as she fucking should. So she escapes to the roof, right? And her and A are tussling. So she hit, so she hit A, right? And then she, like, end up on the other side of the roof. Like, shawty jumped. Like, she leaped. Like, bloop, bloop. And I was like, okay. Like, we finally got our first fight with A. Of course, it's Noah. Like, that's my bitch. Whatever. So, Noah is crying. She's upset. She's like, why are you doing this to me? And da, da, da. And, bro. I, wait. I think I have a note for this. I do. It says. And I read. We're gonna. There you go. Bitch, I just heard A's. A's fuck ass voice. That's what that's what it says. Okay. Okay. A said, cause of your mother. In the creepiest fucking voice I've ever heard in my entire life. I can't even like like try to like repeat it. I I, I can't. But pretty much she's like, why are you doing this to me? Da, da, da. So A pretty much says like you're like no, first A said like something about being guilty. And I was like, hey, hey, like, okay. So my thing is too, who, whoever the fuck is guilty, whether it's Noah or the mom, whatever, clearly you coming from someone, you coming, like, you're trying to come for someone's mom, okay. But if that's the case, also too, why is it any of your business? Oh, wait, it is your business because you definitely have to fucking be related to fucking Angela. If you're doing all this shit, you're taking all the time out of your life to avenge people's mothers and people's kids. Because clearly you are related or somehow connected intimately to Angela. You really got to care a lot about shawty if you're doing all this fuck ass shit to people's children. That's dumb. I don't understand. I think it's dumb as fuck and I really don't like him. And I'm saying to him because one, it sounded like a really him voice. And two, they've been referring to this man as a him for the last episode. So he's going to be a him today. So yeah, he like, the guilty must be punished. And I was like, okay. And, and then like Noah's crying, like talking, like saying shit, whatever, as she should. And then he like, I think she was like, you know, like the guilty. Like, what's that mean? He was like, your mother. And I was like, so now at this point, Noah is getting a flashback of her taking the fall for her mom. Meanwhile, I'm getting a little bloop bloop. I'm getting a little flashback of Noah's mom being one of the five girls not helping Angela while she was, you know, crump coming into the party upset. So I don't really think that they match up. Obviously, Noah has no idea that A has to be connected to Angela because she's not thinking of the fact that like my mom was younger um, she didn't have help Angela, you know, she was a mean girl along with Image's mom, probably, etc, etc. Whereas A is thinking of that, it happened at this fuck ass rave. Noah's thinking, oh, it's because my fuck ass mother let me take the fall for her bullshit. You feel what I'm saying? Completely unaware that she did the same thing to Angela too. Like, 
She let Angela take the fall for something she did not do. And then Angela died probably like a few months later. I just really don't have time. This shit is scary. But hey, yo, when I heard his voice, bro, I literally got chills. I was like, I did not expect him. This shit was crazy as fuck. I'm actually pretty scared. Keep in mind, I just watched this shit during the nighttime. Like, I really got to stop doing this shit because I told myself I can't do this shit. Like, I'm actually scared. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So in the next scene, which is pretty much the last scene, um, and this is also something I talked about earlier in the episode is I really think it's a possibility that Karen and Kelly switch places. Obviously in this episode is supposed to be made mad obvious that they switch places. You know, that's a writer's thing. But usually the case is if the writers make something completely obvious, that's usually not the case. You feel what I'm saying? And that's just not for the original Pretty Little Liars because that's happened a lot. To me, I've learned that's in TV shows in general. When the writers make something completely obvious, that's usually not the case. It's usually going to be a fuck-ass plot twist. And we're going to be sitting there at the TV looking at it like this. <gasps> like, so I'm waiting for that moment. Because I think that moment's going to come. Now we are finally on episode 5. Apparently there's only 10. So if there's only 10, that means we got 5 episodes left. And I'm ready for the... <gasps> I'm ready for that because i feel like it's coming because the shit that a is doing these these last episodes literally make me want to puke the fuck up blood this man is disgusting he's 60 tormented 16 year olds children i really think the five girls should take like a baseball bat each of them have a bat and be him fucking with it the shit that he calls in. You killing teenagers, bro. Teenagers, my guy. You're 50, 60 years old. And then you have the nerve to drive up to the fucking gravesite while girls, 16 year olds, are mourning a fellow classmate they didn't even like. And you're just like this. The fuck does that even mean, bro? Like, I'm so serious. If this is all about you being mad about their fuck-ass moms doing shit to your long-lost relative, then you should go get this. Go go cop a little bottle for my job, okay? Have a little wine. Sit down with the fuck-ass mothers and relax. Talk about it. Have a chat. You know, get over, you know, the whole revenge plot. And it is what it is. And, like, we did this. And yada, yada, yada. Why are you continuing to go after people's children? That's the part I don't like and I don't respect and I don't understand. So because of your whatever, relative, whatever the case is, you're gonna go after the children instead of their fuck-ass mothers who clearly were the fucking classmates of your relative. But now you're gonna go after the children? Their children. What the fuck did they have to do with your relative? Let me the fuck know. I need a drink. I just, I fucking can't, between Imogen, she on a fucking Ouija board trying to contact her mom or whatever the fuck they got going on, which I understand, like, sis is going to be stressed the next fucking 10 episodes trying to find out what her mom, about her mom, because, like, she has a right to, like, her mom, like, got murdered and shorty don't know why, and now she's finding out shit, she, like, I can't just stop, I can't just stop looking, I can't just stop researching, so, like, I understand. And, like, honestly, I want her to find out more. One, I want her to find out what the fuck happened to Angela Waters. I want A to stop playing games. Like, the only one he talked to was Noah. I honestly want A to have a conversation with Imogen. Because if we're being fucking real, if you are killing people because of Angela, you need to go to Imogen because Imogen's mom is the main fucking corporate. It seemed like Imogen's mom was the main one that was mean to her. I mean, of course, like marjorie did some fuck ass shit but from the first episode it seems like angela's mom or image's mom was like the main one that was doing sus shit <clears throat> excuse me i'm gonna go though because i'm actually pretty angry because a pisses me the fuck off so we're gonna hope that in the next episode somebody get into a little tussling again with a because this episode it wasn't really a tussling like yeah noah just was like you know kind of shanked him a little bit like whatever but we need more we need like we need we need contact we need you know a little head but we need a little thrust we need a little pushing we need 
Yeah, because A, A really out here playing motherfucking games and A really had the fucking audacity to be comfortable enough to use their fuck ass voice. This is the first time we heard A's voice, bro. Even in the original, A never just direct contact spoke in their voice. Usually if you were in front of A, A didn't say shit. Obviously if you was over the phone, it was like a little voice coder, John. But like A now just out here using their voice. So A is a little too comfortable for me and I really hope he like gets hit by a car. Hey, you need to fucking sit down and have some motherfucking wine with the moms and figure out your shit and stop coming after people's kids. Have a good day.